G'day fellas and welcome to Beyond All Reason. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the very best backline players in the world. Currently ranked inside the top 20, we're going to be studying their gameplay and look at their decision making so that we can try and educate ourselves and hopefully pass that on to you guys as well. I'm interested in seeing exactly what he's got in store for us. Of course, it is going to be Mum's Boy Toy, who's going to be playing down here on the south side in the color blue, the nice deep dark blue. So without further ado... Let's get into it. So, starting off, as always, it looks like it's just going to be a triple mechs opening. It seems to be the strongest opening. I've seen some players on, on other maps. Obviously, you can put down the wind uh, to if you've got uh, pretty big wind. I'm curious to see the kind of opening that he's going to go for here, but it looks like it is going to be uh, just a triple mechs opening. Now, when it comes to his position back here, this is considered to be one of the safest positions because you've got yourself backed into a corner. You're not going to get flanked from any anything around the backside makes it nice and easy but we do see it's going to be a solar collector opening so normally when i'm playing i like to go into the double solar collector and then into the the bot lab and then that that just gives you a little bit of a safer opening it means that if wind isn't going that well that you'll be fine and it's predictable we can see that here he's going to be uh seeing his, his wind is is pretty decent here but this, this should be your your standard opening when it comes to all the glitters now it's important to note that everybody on this team has got a separate role so normally you would have a player on the back line who's going to be going air somebody who's going to be going eco um and then you'd have your other two players that are going to typically be support and that's on the back line when it comes to front line everybody on, on the front line's got a very similar role it really only changes depending on where your location is on the map and so everything looking pretty standard here it looks like he's going to be opening up with a couple of ticks it could just be for defensive purposes i, I know that uh, having played a couple of these high level games that early aggression is definitely a, a, a common thing we can see him actually boosting out the units right here his wind's quite high so just putting down the two extra uh wind turbines is going to give him plenty but he does idle out and then switches back to the wind turbine so let's check in on the front line and see how his allies are doing so we've got kieran who's going to be playing here in the uh i guess we could call it the i don't know i don't know exactly what these colors are yet steel cyan they're all very close to each other so i've got to be careful about what i call them uh, but he we do have a bot lab on the front to be playing cortex cortex then we've got a vehicle lab uh coming out as well another vehicle lab of course vehicles very very popular on this map just because it is quite a large map very open uh and we do expect to see the commanders all moving towards this central line uh shortly expect to see that from the other side as well expect to see that their commanders begin to move down and you essentially have this 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 giant uh trench that is that is brought out so let's ride back on board with MBT and see how he's doing as he's just going to continue adding wind gens. So he's gone from the, the into the two fleas and now going into a second construction bot. We can see he's added in the first of the mechs down here and just kept adding in wind. And you, one of the things to note is he does not move his commander. You can see at these early stages of the game, he wants to try and keep this commander nice, idle, just chilling out because the commander has got a, an incredible amount of build power here. So we want to be maximizing the amount of time that we spend building rather than doing anything. And he actually goes for the Lazarus after the two... Oh, I take it back. He's gone for a third construction bot. I didn't even see this bad boy right here. So opening up with three construction bots quite early on. We can see now with that third bot, he actually built the uh, the Nano. Second one's come back to help. And the third one's just going to be finishing up that mechs. And we can see that uh, he's going to just continue adding uh, wind turbines for the moment. So ev everything just rocking a, a pretty standard plan i do suspect he's probably going to be moving or building all of his nanos in in this area right here just to try and keep them nice and connected we've got the first commander exploding very early this is an incredibly early commander explode uh who, who's who's done this one it's armada uh it looks like it is is it this gentleman here yeah it, it's gonna be this gentleman here uh so that's a very early commander explode i don't know if you're gonna be in a position to utilize the metal that you're 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 getting i mean yeah even, even at the moment sitting at 500 he's already got the oh geez all right uh we, we'll focus on mbt for the moment let's let's not focus over there because mbt is is uh doing very well at this stage we can see he's gone for the, the the triple construction bots let's ride on board with his perspective though and just get an idea of where that line of sight's coming in on on that top side so you can see at the moment the the ridge or the or the trench has begun to build looks like a little bit of leak gonna be happening manages to clean it all up so very well held on the front line i tell you what playing is the back line it's the worst thing uh when you've got somebody leaking through it's like ah oh, come on man you've got one job and one job only it's, it's to stop those leaks i guess it's also to make those leaks happen for the enemy player so i understand 
Commander going to be going down one or four minutes 18. So a pretty standard timing here. Anything between 418, 440 is, is about where you'd expect it. We can see that down towards the main base is still only sitting on the one nano, which I guess is largely because he's got these three construction bots. So in the, in the early game, it's all about how you spend your metal because you've only got a certain amount of metal that you can possibly have because you take the three maxes at the same time. You look to pick up the subsequent three maxes roughly at the same time. So the question really becomes, how are you going to spend that metal? What's the best way to do it? And I actually think going into the one nano is actually pretty smart because two definitely feels like overkill in the early game, unless you're going to be linking them up. So one of the things I like to do is link them up so that you can extend it out to say, if you've got three maxes here and then one here and one here, then you can kind of link them together. But we do see he leaves the commander there with... Oh, he, rip. Rip. He, he he ate the commander. He left it with about 40 metal on it. And then I, I I wasn't sure. Normally normally you do see players leave it with just a little bit on it in case things go sour in the late game. But we do see a, a pretty standard opening here um, coming through. So now going to be adding in the metal storage as well. And we can see that he does look like he is going pretty crazy when it comes to the energy. This is just a consequence of 16 wind speed. I mean, you, you don't make all of these wind turbines expecting it to be 16. You, you make it because you're expecting it to drop. Uh, and, that, and that's essentially, and that's why we do have the energy storage here. So the first of the, uh, the first of the advanced metal extractors is coming online at the moment, and slowly we are reclaiming the advanced bot lab, and we are going to throw down a second construction turret at this point. So, really efficient use of metal up until this point, uh, maintaining a a pretty healthy uh, economy, and now throwing down that first. Uh, nano and second nano are going to be coming up as well. Or third, rather, third nano are going to be coming up now. Let's uh, let's take a look over towards that front line because. It's always important to, to, to be monitoring the front line. And this is something that you're going to actively be doing throughout your game on the back line. Once, once you, I guess, as, as your skill improves throughout the game, you're going to get better at monitoring. And I've noticed this, this for myself in particular, uh, that, you know, pr previously I was very much focused on what I was doing. And now I've become a lot more focused on what is my team doing? What is my enemy doing? Uh, and, and what are the things that I need to do? And that's what we're going to be looking here for MBT with regard to his decision-making process and see where does he take that foot off the pedal? Because as, as I've said many a time before, when it comes to playing eco, when it comes to playing backline in particular, it's all about how much greed you can get away with because of the exponential scale of economies. What does that mean? It means that your economy is going to be significantly greater uh, if you just wait, say three, four, five minutes, it will double in that time. So if you can hold off for just a little bit longer, it means you're going to be able to greed out another APHIS and another two APHIS. Uh, it will allow you uh, to have a significantly greater position than your enemy who's invested in units. So now we see he's gone for the three advanced metal extractors, has thrown down the fusion, and we've actually got a little bit of an interesting play. Now, I, I actually did the maths on this, and I know this sounds kind of crazy, but uh, I, I can assure you, I, I, I did the math. And, and you guys know I'm a math guy. So when it comes to uh, spawns, I, I found that this spawn up here was actually the best spawn uh, to eco from, just simply because you can take advantage of these two back mexes that are really close to each other. And by the same token, on, on the south side, these two mexes here are very close to each other. So you can put your nanos in the middle and then you can uh, you can build your uh, metal extractors without losing too much. What I, what I found is that by, by doing this, it, it somewhat delays your APHA. So I'm, I'm gonna be curious to see what kind of timing we see for his APHA here. Obviously for us, our, our, our normal APHIS timing around 11.20, 11.30, something like that is, is a decent APHIS timing. But of course, it doesn't always come down to the APHIS timing. It, it also comes down to the, the long game because if you're getting these, these extra metal coming through nonstop and it's an extra 7.3, I mean, technically it's not an extra 7.3 uh, because you're getting 1.8 from this. So it works out to be 5. Point, is it 5.5. So it's an extra 5.5 metal. So that does start to add up through the game. And I'd be curious to see exactly how much it, or how long it would take to pay off. In fact, we can probably do the math right now, 5.5. So it'd take at least 100 seconds to pay off. Talking about 110, 120 seconds maybe. Which is quite some time if you're thinking about that metal that's now being invested in the advanced metal extractor uh, could be invested in the APHIS. And the sooner that the APHIS is down, the sooner that you have the your, um, your... Uh, your advanced energy converters. So that's something to consider. And I'm, I'm looking to fo looking forward to seeing the timing because I guess it's also just not about the uh, the APHIS. It's all about the, the follow-up APHIS because you, you've, you've got to watch for, for timings on that. But another interesting decision. So not going to be going for uh, the advanced energy converter. Instead, going to be going for a whole bunch of just basic energy converters. I do like this. Now, one of the things to note as well is that he actually never went for any normal energy converters uh, in the early stages of the game. It was all just about and it, uh, all just about energy, just collecting energy, just utilizing energy. That was it. Uh, I didn't actually see the number of, of wind turbines he's gone up to. We can obviously eight or see eight, six, and a whole bunch have just been reclaimed over here. I wish we could go back and have a look at that. Maybe somebody can can count it, and leave a comment. Uh, but the APHIS will begin. 
So beautiful use of the construction bot, though, the advanced construction bot. Obviously, this old man, he walks slowly uh, and he carries a big stick. Uh, but we can see that uh, we've got the, the second advanced metal extractor uh, that's on the outside about to be finished. And we'll be moving over to the third one shortly. Let's check in now with our allies and just see what they're doing. Uh, so we've got this gentleman here who looks like he's just going to be providing some T2 support in the form of heavy artillery going for the tremor. Uh, what a meme. Uh, and then we've got this gentleman here who is going to be going into advanced aircraft plants. So going to be going for air, but interestingly, a distinct lack of air, at least at this point in time. Normally, you'd like to see out a little bit more air. Spectre is, is ranked 24, so pretty decent rank here. Uh, and then over towards the east side, it looks like we've got a, another, teching, another teching player with the advanced bot lab. And a couple of butlers going to be coming out as well for our player. So everybody's just getting their tech on at the moment. No, the, my, the part that scares me, okay, we're at 10 minutes now. It doesn't look like there's any sign of Andy Nuke. If I zoom out right now, normally there should be that nice little white circle that shows up. I don't see that. Uh, now, obviously, 10 minutes is still pretty early, but you want to try and get that bad boy online soon. The other thing to note is we don't have any air, so we're definitely weak to air, definitely weak to nukes. Uh, so these are things that we want to be thinking about. So I'm curious as, as to whether MBT addresses this or, or how he reacts if there is an air threat because that's something that we're going to be looking out for because over on the other side of the map, we don't know what the enemy team is up to at this point. Uh, every, everything is held up until this point. So f from MBT's perspective, I think he's happy with how the game's going. Obviously, it could be going better. We could just be, you know, you could just be winning. Uh, but when, it, when you compare the numbers that are on the front here, if we just take our, our, um, our fog of war off. So we've got one player here, two players... Uh, three players, and it looks like the fourth one is slowly trickling through units, our white play here. Uh, so we, yeah, for the, for the most part, you see every, all the front liners are on the front line, uh, all the back liners are on the back line with a couple of units out. It looks like we've just got some rocketeers and now adding in the hounds. So T2 support going to be coming through from our central player. Uh, so at, at, at this point, to me, that, that would just, for MBT, all, all he sees at this point is just like, hey, just just keep putting the, the pedal down. There's nothing here to indicate that he needs to take the foot off the pedal. Just keep booming like an absolute madman. Uh, and that's what he's going to keep doing. Um, so it, it definitely makes sense the, the way that he, he's playing it up until this point. Um, so the next big thing that he's going to be looking for is after the Aphis is finished, where does he go from there? Because I, I often see that as a point... Uh, of where we can take the foot off the pedal. Uh, and one thing to note is he's actually got a, a whole bunch of metal that's just kind of chilling out here uh, for the moment. So this could technically be a much faster Aphis. Uh, 11.50 and it's coming up at 17 seconds. Ideally, you want zero metal in the bank when you finish the Aphis. So, I mean, he, he is timing it pretty well. He's also got plenty of energy uh, or well, plenty of wind turbines that he could have sucked up during this time. So even though obviously he's a very good player, there's, it's it's interesting that there's still very, uh, there, there are opportunities for improvement here. But I guess maybe he, he's playing it a little bit safer. And we do now see the pre-planning of the base coming through, just leaving enough space for the four construction turrets, which is always what you want to be doing, just because when you come back through later in the game and you reclaim your construction turrets, it allows you to fit in either two more APHIS or to fit in uh, more energy converters with, without leaving any space at all. So throwing down nanos at the same time that he's throwing down his advanced energy converters, uh, he is... Uh, He's looking in a pretty strong position at this point. So making sure he just focuses on the one at one at the time and immediately throws down an obelisk because we've now got... we. So here you go. So we have got no, no aircraft on the field with the exception of some advanced construction aircraft. So the immediate response from MBT is throw down an obelisk, uh, which is the T2 flat gun. Uh, and we can see that also throws down a chainsaw immediately on top of it and then throws down an obelisk. He's very fortunate that he had the metal in the bank and perhaps that's why he was saving that metal, just in case. Wants to play it safe. Uh, and perhaps that, that was the whole play. And so now the flat guns are going to be able to fire down upon these... Uh, these bombers and it looks like they miss pretty much everything you can see that the bombing run was just kind of hitting the back here the consequence of no scouts loses all of the uh all, all of the energy conver converters but fortunately put them so far away from everything else it's not going to really matter so it, it's not a huge loss and to be honest he, he, he's about to replace all of those uh, and it, honestly i feel like he, he lost absolutely nothing from that in fact he actually gained something because now he doesn't have to spend all that annoying time reclaiming, or reclaiming rather, uh, the energy converters. So thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Was that Dejavi that uh, that helped out MBT right there with a nice little, uh, a, a nice little uh, run by? Now one uh, one interesting thing to note here is that he's going for a fifth energy converter, and th this is where I guess I, I kind of have my 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 mind goes a, a little bit goes a little bit crazy. So adding in the fifth energy converter. So normally, uh, j just to explain it, so the Aphis has got three thousand. Uh, energy that it creates and the energy converter takes up 600 energy uh, which means that you're left with uh, absolutely zero if you've got five energy converters so 
obviously in this situation we can see that the fusion reactor is here uh, and that's going to be providing that extra 1000 over the top but we want to start reclaiming that and that's exactly what we do i just realized uh, i was going to say are there no health bars on i do have health bars um so there there he is going to begin reclaiming it uh, and when he reclaims it, he's going to go down to zero metal. But I guess this is one of those things where perhaps he's he's done the min-maxing on it. And he said, well, you know what? Realistically, uh, I, I'm going to have this fusion up long enough to justify uh, that th this an advanced energy converter gets made beforehand. We can actually see him throwing down a, a second one over the top of it. This is kind of ludicrous. I don't think I've ever seen... How is he supporting this? Hold on. You, you, that's 3,000 four, or 3,642. And he's only sitting on 4,000 energy. So, And they're not even turning off or on. Is, is he getting excess energy from his allies? Perhaps that's what it is. Perhaps perhaps there's an ally that's feeding in energy um, that, that's uh, that's popping off a bit of a surplus at the moment. And maybe he's looking to exploit that. Yeah, Marlboro is looking like he's got uh, a fair bit of energy. So maybe that's the case. So interesting decision from him to do that. Uh, so almost not necessarily relying on your teammate, but uh, uh, taking advantage of your teammate. So this is a, a smart adaptation, and I'm definitely going to look to implement this because this is a, a great way uh, that you can take advantage of your teammates. Now, remember, the big thing that he's looking to do is carry his team in this position. He wants to make sure that if he gets to the late game, he's going to be able to influence the result as well as he possibly can. And that's what's important. So as long as the team doesn't 100% fall over on, his, on their faces, he should be able to influence the game. That's what it's all about. And we now see him throwing down one, two, three, and and going to be throwing down a fourth more advanced energy converter and then runs the little man the old man all the way back over to the other side looking oh and there's the anti-nuke okay so any nuke coming coming up finally uh and uh you can see this is the first one on the team uh, at 16 minutes and i tell you what there are some nuke rushes that hit well before these 16 minutes are over let me tell you that much so energy or well, nuke nuke comes down and goes for an uh, hardened energy storage as well which I guess he's interesting. I, I'm curious what the thought process is behind that. I would assume he's always going to be using max energy because he's got the he's got max like energy converters all the time. But still, he hits a surplus. See, this is this is where I, I'm learning at the moment because he's on two Aphis, but he's on two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven advanced energy converters. That that is crazy to me. And still, <laughs> still building up a surplus. How? Where is it coming from? It's got to be from the allies. It's got to be from the allies. I can't explain it any other way. Because keep in mind, all of these uh, construction turrets are, are using power as well. And when you got this many construction turrets, twenty-eight. Not to, not to mention the other guys over here. It's uh, it's just it's uh, guaranteed to, to use a lot of energy. But we now start to see him sucking out. Uh, the, the metal. Of course, when you don't need that anti-air anymore, just get rid of it. This anti-air was reactive. He threw it down when he was in a pinch because there was air that was coming in to threaten his base. So he threw it down, but he doesn't need it anymore and he can reinvest that. But take a look at this. His metal is starting to go absolutely tropo. And as soon as this Aphis finishes, he's going to be in trouble. So he needs to throw down some more. Uh, he's going to need to throw down either a gantry uh, or he's going to need to throw down a hardened metal storage. And at this point, this is one of those points where you can take the foot off the pedal if you, if you need to. Uh, but realistically, I mean, you, you're kind of getting pushed in over towards this central location, but this technically isn't really your job. But uh, at the same time, it is kind of your job in the sense that if you lose, <laughs> it was your job, right? If, if this is the point uh, that you lose from and you could have done something to help it, then maybe it was your job. Uh, so that, that's, I guess that's always one way that you can look at it. And I think that's part of the, the decision-making process that I love about Beyond All Reason is that you have a lot of ability to influence the game from the back line. The question is, in what way are you going to do it and when are you going to do it? Because keep in mind, if, if he decides to influence that gap, there's the potential that he's the, the opposite backliner is booming like crazy at this point. Now, we don't know what they're booming at. Uh, w should we do a sneaky little check? We'll, we'll, let's do a check at 20 minutes, okay? 20 minutes will come in. We'll see if MBT's ahead. We'll see whether he's behind. I would suspect he's probably going to be ahead because this is a very efficient boom. The base layout is absolutely perfect. Um, the only thing that I, I would probably fault him on is like not enough space over on this side, but I suspect what he's probably going to be doing is just using these nanos to build up the Aphis in the middle, and then he'll put a, a couple of metal extractors on, on the out, or the energy converters on the outside, uh, and then just reclaim these and then put the energy converters on, back on the inside. Now we see he's thrown down an aircraft plant, and that is in response to a very large force. It's a whole bunch of shurikens now going to be coming in on the front line. So a big attack going to be coming out now from the north team. Uh, shurikens getting pretty well destroyed though. You can see that the, the fighters are doing a, a decent job here. So I'm, I'm curious exactly what the decision-making process was behind this, uh, because he, he kind of threw this down a little bit earlier. Maybe it was because the, the, uh, the ally asked for anti-air, though I think that came in after. 
Uh, perhaps, perhaps he just realized, you know what, it's, it's time to actually get some air down. Uh, we, we, you know, our, our teammates uh, said he was going to go air. He's like, oh yeah, I was going to go air at, uh, at 10 minutes. Yeah, he, he was talking about uh, construction aircraft. He wasn't talking about uh, fighters. So it definitely leaves, leaves you with a bit of a vulnerability. So he only goes for the T1 fighters. Obviously, investing in the T2 is quite big. And that's one of the, the problems that I find myself often having is that I anchor into T2. I'm like, no, I'm eco. I, I need to go into T2 because T2 is better than T1, but it takes you so much longer. And we can see that he just gets out a couple of fighters. I mean, he's already got out 20 fighters at the moment, I think. Uh, and that, that's a significant force that's already on the field and just kind of front loads all of that. And we can also see some light she's going to be coming in now, uh, which are going to be the atomic bombers. So he, he is indeed putting the, the pedal or taking the pedal off the gas for the moment. Uh, and we can now see the reclaiming starting to happen. One, my one fear right now is that this uh, advanced construction bot is a little bit too far away uh, from these nanos, but fortunately he's got the advanced con aircraft plant, which we'll be able to take over very soon. It always becomes a question in a any backline. Oh, let's pause, pause the game, pause the game. We're at 20 minutes. I always love to do my benchmarks at 20 minutes, see where we are at, at 20 minutes. So at the moment, uh, let's, let's turn off player view. Uh, so we've got 19 energy converters. Technically, yeah, we'll call it 19. And we've got five APHIS coming through. So that's a pretty decent boom coming in at 20 minutes. Uh, he, he's in a pretty decent spot as well. He's got his anti-nuke up. Uh, and he's got some advanced air that's now starting to come out. So this is a really, really uh, nice timing for him to hit at, at 20 minutes. Let's take a look over on the other side of the team and see if we can spot out the backliners that are doing well on their side. Now, we do see uh, Dujavi, who is also backlining here. Went for an early air attack. So we only see the two APHIS at the moment. And that is 10 uh, of the advanced energy converters. Now, we always want to be comparing APHIS numbers. APHIS numbers are the most important because APHIS is, uh, the APHIS allows you to scale into metal. Uh, th that's the difference. That's why it's so strong. It looks like we don't have any APHIS at the moment uh, coming through from our second backline player or our third backline player. I'm looking for it. Yeah, you don't see either of these guys going for uh, APHIS at the moment. And then over towards... The west side, it looks like our first APHIS is coming down. So definitely a bit more of a delayed economy. Actually, I, I know that's just a normal fusion. Uh, so definitely a bit more of a delayed economy. And I think the fact that th there's been a relatively solid, I say a relatively solid or uh, front line from your offense uh, is, is a good thing for you. But now is definitely the right time for MBD to take the, the pedal off the metal. Take a look at what's happening in the middle of the map right now. There is a huge push coming out. The front line has completely crumbled. And obviously we can see that that's why he's gone into Lychee. Lychee makes a lot of sense here because it's going to be able to clear up a lot of these units. Let's check in with his backline and see how they're doing. So down towards the south side, we've got his ne next door neighbor. I think this is Marlboro uh, with two APHIS, so not too bad. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, the, the air player. <laughs> I say air player with, with, with air quotes. We've got Spectre uh, who's going for the single APHIS at this point. And we've got another APHIS over here. Uh, for Srez. Now, the reality is we don't know exactly what these players have been doing. Uh, so we can see that Srez right now is going for a pit bull on the front. He added in a, kep a keeper. I always call want to call these Keplers. I don't know why. Uh, but he, he, we don't know exactly what they're doing. But we know exactly what MBT has been doing. He's been playing quite greedy in the corner. He, he has reacted only when he needed to react and on only when it was imminent that there was a threat. So let's keep watching. Let's keep moving forward and see exactly how the rest of the game unfolds. So he's going to look to defend with Lychee. Uh, the problem is there's a lot of ground-based anti-air. We can see them all sitting back here. Uh, so he, he's going to have a difficult time dealing with that. Now we've got the Nighthawks coming in, I think they are. Yeah, oh, sorry, the High Winds coming in. Uh, they, they're going to be coming through. Back in the good old days of TA, they used to be called Vamps and Hawks. Oh, nukes right to the front. That is a problem. Oh my lord, I did not see that one coming at all. Jeez Louise. Okay, fortunately we caught that one on the camera, but look how much this opens the front line. All, all of a sudden, this is not looking good right now for MBT. So the question is, how does he hold? Let's check in with the base of MBT. Let's see what the reactions are because we, we've got a whole bunch. Let's, uh, let's turn off player view because I, I want to be able to select these. So he's got just the two light G out here for the moment, but still getting pushed on from that front side. Let's zoom out a little bit more just so that we can get a bit more identification on those colors. Commander looks like it might have gone down on the edge there. Leo Forge trying to hold on to his front as well. Everybody's leaking through. And this is where the game looks like it might be over. 
Uh, so we've got the Tigers that are coming through, and the question becomes, you know, did did we wait too long to come online? Not really, because I, I, I still feel like the nuke was what really opened it up. The front was somewhat holding, even though it had been forced back, and now it looks absolutely terrible. The position, just simply because that nuke just opens up everything, it takes out all the forces. So the reaction from MBT back home, it looks like it's going to be the tier three gantry. So we're right on board with him now as he his response is is complete. And we've also got tick spam that's going to be coming out. These used to be called fleas back in the day, so it's going to take me some time. But we've got the Marauders out on the front line. They're doing a pretty decent job here of holding it for the moment. And four, four Marauders going to be able to clean up that west side. We can hear those ticks just behind the scenes. Now keep in mind the Marauder also acts pretty effectively as an anti-air unit. Uh, so he'll be able to put on pressure in the event there are any air units that are coming out. But now a whole bunch of fiends going to be looking to put on pressure as well. So behind this, MBT just putting the foot down at this point and saying, we need, we, need to, we need to stop the car, my friends. We need to get out. Uh, we, we need to make sure that, uh, that we are safe. We need to try and recover the front. And the, the, the trouble that you have when, when you're in this position is morale. Team morale right now would be at its lowest point. anti are going to be going off. Looks like that will get intercepted. Indeed it does. Uh, no misses here, baby. Um... So morale is going to be the biggest uh, the issue that you've got because right now you've been sitting in the back. And to be fair, a lot, a lot of people, they know what the role of the, the back line is, but they I don't think they understand necessarily how important it is that you don't make anything until you have to uh, because that, that's really what it comes down to. Now, there, there are extenuating circumstances. You often see backline players decide to get out on the front line and play things a little bit differently. And when that happens, you, you probably want to issue a response a lot sooner than what MBT did. But we saw what his enemy backline was up to. They were all pretty passive as well. So he's definitely made the right call up until this stage. And now the ticks are going to be coming out. He's also got the battle mechs in the front line. The, we've got the Razorbacks here. They're just tearing apart. All the Brutes. Is it the Brutes? It is the Brutes. I'm slowly getting all of these names down for each of these units. And the Fiend's going to be able to run through. Looking to try and clean up this, this front line and should successfully do it. Now we are also see on the back line, we've got some... Mobile Tachyon weapon. Tachyon? Tachyon? Tachyon. Sounds like a, a Porsche. Take on. Uh, is, is, that, is it actually take on? Take on. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it. The, elect the Porsche electric vehicle. The take on. See them all, all the time down here in Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. Not Melbourne in Florida. There is a Melbourne in Florida. But uh, ours, is, ours is a little bit different. A little bit further away. So let's, let's do a little bit of a stock check. Because at the moment, MBT, he's added in a whole bunch of nanos. Just, just for further... Uh, expansion, right? Because you've got to remember, we, we never stop scaling, okay? Even if we take our foot off the pedal and even if we put it onto the brake, we still need to scale. Once we've broken back or once we've, we've gone and taken back that front line, great. Now it's time to put the, the pedal back down and there it is. There it is. Straight back into the APHIS, baby. So looking to spend those resources. We never stop scaling on the back line. This is so important to do because you do not want to get outscaled. Now, there's a couple of important things that you need to think about when you're scaling because uh, the, technically there are three resources, but I like to think of them as four resources. The first one, energy. That's an easy one. The second one, metal. That's another easy one. The third one, build power. That's another easy one, okay? There's a fourth one aerial build power in the late game as a scaling eco backline player aerial build power is what enables you to get somewhere quickly and get something done what am i talking about baby i'm talking about the ragnarok i'm talking about the calamity that's what i'm talking about because when it comes to the late game positions what's really important is getting that sneaky ragnarok up first if you can get your ragnarok up first it enables you to just have a really solid control of the game uh, and that normally comes through from having that that build power because you can put a Ragnarok in your base. So you put a Ragnarok right here, but the reality is, is that Ragnarok will be great for defense, might hit you, the enemy front lines, but it's not really going to do too much in uh, at, at winning the game. If anything, it just kind of prevents you from losing. Ideally, what you want to be doing is looking to throw a Ragnarok up somewhere around here, maybe here. I don't, I'm not actually sure if you can get one there. This is a, this is a really good spot. I like that one. And uh, back here, this is another really good spot over here. Because uh, then you can bounce off the top if, if anybody's over here. Uh, but Tick Spam continuing towards that front side. Opponent not going for Ticks, instead going for Rascals. Look at this. A whole bunch of Rascals trying to run through, just getting completely annihilated, those poor little guys. Uh, fortunately, a, a couple of them do make it through, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too long before... Oh, never mind. They make, make it on the way back. And now that push is coming out. Razorbacks 
getting bombed by the strategic bombers do a decent do do job dodging and also acting as anti-aircraft look at this these guys are amazing i love these guys you know, one of the things I need to incorporate more into to my play is having more of the uh, Lazarus out on the field. I've seen a lot of people do this. They bring out like 20, 30 Lazarus and just repair all of the, the Razorbacks on the front line, start re resurrecting. Um, and you can see in the chat right now, Hawks on the enemy team saying, oh my God, we almost won this and now they're coming back. And you want to know why they're almost... The reason why you think you almost won. The truth is you never even got close to winning in that situation was because... MBT decided, I'm going to take my foot off the accelerator right now. That's exactly what he did. And he put all of those resources, instead of putting them into more economy, he put them into uh, he, he put them into, into units. And he turned that around. Now, the, the question is, is that going to matter in the long run? That's, that's the big thing. Because you need to start looking for those win conditions in the late game. Obviously, there's lots of different win conditions you can go for in, in, in games like this. Big air, uh, big eco is not really a win condition. It's, it's more of like, it's a means to an end, isn't it? Big eco. Uh, big air is definitely uh, one of the things that you can do. Uh, the, the Ragnarok, of course, is another really strong thing that you can do. Uh, my personal favorite is like mass nukes. <laughs> I, I was talking to Snooper about it. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know Snooper, he's, he's a pretty good uh, Age of Empires 4 player. He, he plays beyond all reason as well. And I was like, man, I, I don't know. Just going like 20 nukes in the late game seems pretty good. And he's like, bro, how do you have 20 nukes? <laughs> it's like, well, you just make 20 nuke silos. And he's like, people don't do that, Drongo. That, that, that's not a thing. People do not do that. Okay. Uh, so I guess we probably could have spent our resources a little bit more effectively. Uh, but I, I don't think we're going to be seeing that coming out from MBT. And another nuke hits on the front line. It looks like, oh, look at the beautiful placement of that nuke as well. Right outside the radius of the anti-nuke. So obviously that anti-nuke got scouted. And uh, where, where is that anti-nuke? Somewhere over here. I tell you what, I'm, I'm a little, there it is. I'm a little bit blind. Uh, so it, it gets scouted out and boom, right on the edge. And I guess this is the consequence or the trade-off of going for those, uh, th those stuck down uh, citadels rather than going for the mobile anti-nuke is that you can't really cover your army with that. And obviously they, they do serve different roles, uh, but there, there's definitely a, uh, a reason why one of them is, is, is mobile with a, a much lower range coverage than the other. All right, we're checking back in with MBT. Let's see how he's doing. So we've still got this giant block of Aphis that's coming down. And I love the way that he's doing this. Keeps everything really close together. Doesn't have to think about it. You know, one of the, the biggest issues I often find myself doing in the early game is like looking at my base building. Okay, how am I going to build? How am I going to do this? How am I going to uh, fit everything in? Uh, and it, it really looks like to me that MBT doesn't have to think that much about it. Realistically, you know, just everything's all the way down to the edge of the map, all the way up to the top of the map. You know, very simple, very linear, uh, straightforward. No, no, no silly L shapes. That I, I always end up doing like this, this, this little L shape with my nanos where I've got them all on the corner. But I think he's got more than enough nanos here to cover, and he's doing a great job of spending his medalists. I, I, you know, one of the things that annoys me, and maybe this is something that the devs could probably look at, at doing, is when when you're playing team games and you have excess metal, it doesn't actually count as excess metal uh, because it just goes to your allies. Uh, and I, I'd love if, like, instead of it showing excess metal, it's, it shows like uh, metal shared or something. Well, not even metal shared. Uh, Actually, Metal Shed prob probably works. But but I guess then it's like... It, it also... Th then that maybe gets construed as like the metal that you've intentionally given to somebody. You know, like... I, oh, they, I bought a T2 bot from them. So I, I shared 460 metal uh, to them. And, you know, th like that that's a little bit different. So I, I don't know how you'd really go about phrasing that. But we can see the tick spam now coming towards the front. Starlight's going to have a little bit of trouble dealing with this. Obviously, very good at single target focus. Not particularly good. And I take it back. They're not actually ticks. They're rascals. Look at them go, little rascals. Uh, oh, that was not where I wanted to go. And that was not how fast I wanted to go either. I thought I, that was going to go a lot slower than that. Uh, big push now coming out though as well. Tiger's moving forward. Big T2 tanks. Looking at, to hit that enemy front line. And we've got ourselves a little bit of a pushback coming through. Big air though. From our red player, Dejuvi. Or Dujavi. Apologies. And look at the response straight away from MBT. Throws down construction aircraft. Now, here's a question for you. What's more efficient? Construction aircraft or advanced construction aircraft? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a believer in the advanced construction aircraft, but then someone said, actually, Drongo, try try the, uh, the normal one. So you've got 100 build power here versus 60 build power for the construction aircraft. So two of these is more than double. But take a look at the cost difference, okay? You've got 110 metal, 3,000 uh, 3, uh, energy versus 340, 12,000. So they cost four times the energy, more than three times uh, the, the metal, and yet they don't even provide double the build power. So in in mass, 
I think it's definitely the right call. And look at all the all, all of the blinks coming out. Are they blinks? I, I wasn't 100% sure what the, what they are. No, they're just a whole bunch of high winds. We can see he's, he's just going into Falcons, actually. A little bit of a bull attempt as well. Now down on this east flank. And we've got trouble in Paradise over on this east side. The shooters have been caught. The, the sharpshooters, rather, have been caught. No front line for them. Or if there was a front line, unfortunately, it's gotten eaten alive because the Razorbacks are here as well. Looks like some Ticks going to be trying to come over here and, and help out with it. But up against the Razorbacks, you're going to have a tough time. Let's see how well they do. They're holding on. He's, fo he's focusing down the buildings instead of focusing down the units. And the Ticks now on the back. Not going to be anywhere near it. Looks like some Pitbulls should be able to hold it. You can see they've, they've marked it out. Kill Anti-Nuke. That's what's been targeted. And now look at this. MBT coming in clutch right now. Throwing down some Pulsars on the back line. Looking to defend this position. And this is where it comes out to being able to help your allies. Was he able to help his allies earlier? Yes, he was. But was he able to do it with the scalable build power that he's got now, which is this 31 advanced construction aircraft? And we talked earlier about that fourth, that secret fourth hidden resource. This is it now coming in. And MBT going to be throwing down more pulsars. Back in the days, these used to be called annihilators. You know, they, one of the the, uh, the other thing was with the annihilator, it had to open up every time it wanted to shoot. It used to be sitting down in here. It was so annoying, man, because a unit would come into range and it would open up. It would, would awaken itself. It would like, it would take it would take eight seconds to awaken. It was it was kind of wild. All right, so Pulsars are down. Beautiful little job here by MBT. Throws down some Mercuries as well, just to keep it safe from air. And oh my God, speaking of keeping it safe from air, all the construction aircraft now going to be running down towards that south side of the map. Whole bunch of air now looking to try and find it out. We'll zoom out so that we can get a better picture of the numbers. And you can see that looks like MBT will be able to, to overwhelm his opponent for the moment, forcing them back. So having a decent little job here and really looking to cover on every single front. Wherever there's a, there's a hole, MBT tries to cover it. The air front it was covered no one else is doing air so he's like he says I'll, I'll do it tick spam well who needs ticks when you got pawns baby he spams it out with pawns B comes in with the with the the pulsars and this is what it's all about this is about playing this econ position making sure that you're there to cover your allies in the late game they covered you early now it's your turn to be the carry because that's all that's what it's all about i mean i don't know about you guys but for me back when i played like league of legends dota 2 all those team games even, even like age of empires oh that's a big one uh, it's a juno <laughs> uh back it, when I play like any kind of team game, I love to be the carry, right? It feels good to be the carry. It feels good to be the guy who, who gets to gets to go, yeah, I, I had the biggest army. That was so much fun. Uh, and, and that's obviously what, what MBT is channeling right now. But there, there's also the unsung hero, which is the support player. Uh, and the, the one that is, is rarely looked at in the highlight reel. Uh, but that, that's the person who holds the front. That's the person who provides the T2 bots. That's the person who makes sure that you, you back up your front line with artillery when they need it. And still, somehow, MBT is holding on. Uh, still scaling in into the late game. What, what are we at? We're at 34 minutes at the moment. It's not normally a benchmark that I use, but we let, let's let's use it. Let's use it. We're going to pause the game quickly. We're just going to check in and see exactly how economies are doing. Uh, so at the, at the moment, MBT sitting on a total of... Uh, how many APHIS have we got here? We've got 21 APHIS uh, that are about to be complete. We can actually just check his energy down in the bottom right-hand corner. I do appreciate it. It is quite small. Uh, so 58k for him. Now, his team total is 114k. So he is sitting at more than double, or not more than double, sorry, more than half, uh, his total team. And that that's this scaling position. Now, keep in mind, obviously, MBT is incredibly good, which allows him to do all of these things at the same time. He's, he's controlling planes, he's controlling ticks, he's controlling pawns, he's bringing in his aircraft and throwing down pulsars when he needs to. He's got his anti-aircraft coming over the top. And at the same time, he's not forgetting about his economy and he's managing all of that at the same time. And that, that is a real skill. And that's part of the reason why he is one of the best backline players in the world. Now, keep in mind, I, I should also just point this out, even though we're 38 minutes through this video right now, um, even though MBT is not ranked number one, ranked number two, ranked number three, ranked number four, those top guys don't really seem to play 8v8s in the same way that the larger community does. I think I, I don't know, but I suspect they're probably more focused around 2v2s, 4v4s, the, the, the sort of smaller games. Uh, compared to this, this is obviously a little bit of a fear but at the same time there, there is an element of control and that's exactly what MBT looks to express today so let's check in with the other backline player uh, who is going to be looking to, to throw down nine APHIS so this is the difference right nine APHIS uh, versus your 21 and obviously there there are some some big differences in the way that they've played obviously uh, Dujavi looked for a bit of agency in the early game also going into air and has been going air throughout the game but compare that to a pure eco player 
who was able to shut down the air attack with just a couple of investments and then simply reclaim those investments, uh, there, there's a big difference. Uh, so I, I think that's that's overall well played. When it comes to the other numbers on the team, so 58k, 12k, uh, a 19k down here for Marlborough, and then on the other side, 27k, 12k, another 12k. So nobody even really close. The closest is definitely Dujavi, uh, but MBT is just miles ahead. So let's dive back into the game. Let's keep watching now from MBT's perspective and see exactly how this goes because oh it looks like my uh, my mini map how do i get how do i how do i get rid of that there we go play of you sometimes the the fog of war isn't isn't showing properly and it kind of throws me off so he's managed to hold over on the east side and now here it comes we've got the ragnarok ragnarok is coming but this is where it comes into that fourth um that that fourth uh, resource that we haven't really done well with at, at this moment. And I, I would probably say it's one of those things where it's, it's a little bit hard to, to judge perfectly. I'm trying to, trying to get an exact number on, on how many he's got in here. I, I really don't know how to select it, but it doesn't... Only 59. So normally I, I wouldn't start building a Ragnarok until I've got like maybe a, a hun at least 100 uh, advanced air, uh, construction aircraft. Uh, and, and you can see that it, it, it's taking a bit of time here. Uh, but immediately he's throwing down... We've got some uh, an Arbalus that's being thrown down right now. Let's turn on our play of view. And we've got a big a big attack coming through. MBT needs to bring all aircraft now. A whole bunch of air transporters are coming through as well. Stealthy armed air transporters. And MBT going to evacuate from the front line. They will probably see the Ragnarok here, so they will know to target it down. MBT throwing down some Mercuries on the backside. And we, we now see all those aircraft coming along a little bit late uh, in the response, but I guess he just wants to keep his own base safe. He did have more units over towards this position. We see an additional Mercury being thrown down. You can see how quick he throws it down. And th this is the problem, okay? And, and we, we can say for a fact that this hasn't... Uh, the, the, uh, the fourth... Um, the, the fourth uh, resource hasn't been scaled effectively because we're stacking up so much metal at the moment. It, it, it's very difficult to spend all of this metal when, when you've got such a high income, uh, but we want to try and be able to spend it. And we can see a second Ragnarok going to be coming down. Uh, so th that's why we want to try and hit that really high number. So he's up to 75 now. Th this will be 89. So he's bringing in more. So we see 90 and this is exactly it. So my question is, did he wait too late to come online with, with the advanced air constructors? Because I feel like he probably could have come online a little bit earlier with them. Uh, and he, he's left it until about 64K. I, actually, I, I take that back. I think that, that's probably around the right time for about 50K is, I think, when you want to really go ham. I guess one thing to note is that he's only got the one advanced aircraft plant, though. So I think perhaps a, a, one thing that he could look for is throwing down a second or even a third advanced aircraft plant in the late game. Now going to start eating through that metal, we can see. And it, look, it sounds like the enemy's got a Ragnarok online. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, and so we can see the deflecting coming through. Remember, these guys don't absorb the shots. They deflect it. And look at those shots coming down. Oh, off the deflector shield, onto the back line, another one coming through. We gotta, we gotta throw down straight away. We gotta get our, get our keepers down. Everybody needs to throw down keepers immediately. Uh, and we see right now, immediately MBT throws down a keeper just in case he cops a deflect. It's not gonna matter. Looks like it gets it completely annihilated. But MBT, he's looking to try and get this up. Less than a minute to go on this. Keep in mind, more than 100 construction aircraft are in here at the moment. Let's uh, let's lower the camera down because this is what it all comes down to, right? You've you've scaled into this position into the late game. This is this is one of your win conditions. You've definitely got the better spot up here. The only problem is you don't really have an, um, enough spots for keepers, and you probably need more keepers if you want to survive through a Ragnarok. The number I've heard is you need at least seven. And there we go. There's the, the additional keeper is going to get thrown down. Now I, I'm assuming that this covers up up here. I don't actually know if it does. I, I would assume it does. Is if MBT is making them down here, maybe he's just. I mean, you're running a dangerous game right here. You're kind of deflecting off into this base on the south side, and you can see just how much damage the Ragnarok's doing. You know, th this game actually seemed like it was going relative. Oh my god! And you can see just how 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 powerful the Ragnarok is use, utilizing the keeper. Newt goes in over on the east side. It utilizes the keeper and hits the back line. And this is why it's so important. You can see MBT immediately threw down all of these keepers over in front of his own base. And that's why our back lines need to do that. As soon as the Ragnarok comes online, oh no, all the construction aircraft eviscerated in a single moment. The Ragnarok able to take them out in the air, causing the chain reaction, hitting all the advanced aircraft. Now down the Ragnarok, it's being built. How long does he have left on it? 11 minutes, 20 minutes, no, not like this. 23 minutes on the Ragnarok. He's going to need backup on R6. Somebody give him backup and look at look at MBT now, how he's taking over this corner of the map. But we do see the Ragnarok looking to position itself down towards this bottom side. You can see that the, the shots are bouncing through. MBT covering his, the entirety of his base, at least all the back of his base, all the, all the front of his base. You can see, no, he's, he's got everything covered. It's all covered. There's like one little spot back here, but I don't think you can get it back there. And now MBT beginning to move forward. We can see a whole bunch of aircraft coming through. 
looking to try and scout out the enemy positions, clear out the aircraft, clear out the constructors. He runs through, he's dealing with all those Mercuries and gets cleaned up completely. Doesn't even make it through to the halfway line. And definitely trying to come online now, but struggling. I, I can't help but feel like that single Ragnarok shot that hit the aircraft almost, may have just cost MPT this game. The position that he was in, if this Ragnarok comes online, he's able to return fire. Now, if we take a look at that, ra that enemy Ragnarok, he would just be looking to open the heavens upon it. And there's only three keepers that are protecting it. Only three keepers that are protecting it. This is, this is just, you, you can walk through this in less than 20 seconds. So this is definitely where it becomes, you know, like if he can get this Ragnarok online, there is the potential that he is able to turn it. But we can see now that he's getting targeted by the enemy Ragnarok. Just all, all of the aircraft immediately looking to try and get underneath the protection of the keepers. Still looking to do his best to keep it alive. He's trying to get it up and throwing down another keeper on the backside. He knows he needs protection. Ragnarok down to 14 health, 10%, 7%. Don't do me, not like this. I'm at 89%. Please, he says, please just let me live. And fortunately, he lives a little bit longer. He's down to 7% on this bad boy. Trying to get it up. First keeper is up on, on this top ground again. So lucky, says one of the spectators. I don't know how to turn off those markings. If anybody knows how to turn off those markings, please let me know. And I can hit this button and it gets rid of them. But yeah, so lucky indeed. Wow. Uh, but uh, now the Ragnarok looking to try and hit through onto the back line. Uh, managing, I don't know how he does it. He's, he's managing to go over the top here onto that back line. Let's check in with MBT and see how... Oh, no, he's hit it. He hit it. And that's just it. I mean, and from there, that is that is a game-winning shot right there. It all, all just comes down to that shot over the top and why you, you have to give so much respect to those Ragnaroks especially when there's no real response that you can issue. And now the Ragnarok firing over towards that west side, cleaning up all of MBT's allies. And the Ragnarok looks like it might come online. MBT now going to be firing it down the middle towards the enemy Ragnarok. And you can see he's run out of energy, but all those shots going to start bouncing off into the stratosphere. Look at him heading off in all different directions. Juno's firing off as well. And now Ragnarok of the enemy is returning fire immediately. He's trying to repair all, he's, he's trying to get the repair, and we can see a whole bunch of normal construction bots are, are coming out. Ragnarok, though, sitting at 31%. He's trying to get it back alive. Needs more keepers in here. Big shot coming through. 24%. He's trying his best to keep it alive. 18%. Really doing his best to try and repair it up, but he's losing aircraft. 14%, 13%, 10%. Not like this. He needs to break through. The keeper's on the other side. We can see... Oh, no! The Ragnarok goes down. The final shot manages to take it out. And with that, MBT is falling with all of the allies. He tried his best from the back line to carry this game, but with the fall of the Ragnarok is the fall of MBT himself. Well, I think overall, it was a pretty solid game coming out from the man. It was unfortunate in the end. It seems like there's only really one player left, but you got to remember, he doesn't get here without the rest of these guys. And even though he loses this game, I still think this is a wonderful example of how you can utilize the back line to try and influence the, the outcome of the game. Unfortunately, things didn't go well for MBT today. He waited around. Oh, so it looks like we, uh, we've, we've got a classic. You're not even making T3 units with full metal, says Marlboro. <laughs> hey, Marlboro, to be fair, you had full metal at the start of the game, mate, and you didn't make T3 units. You made a mechs, and then you made a solar collector. So, joke's on you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you can see. Uh, so, it's... Uh, I, I think this is this is a common uh, a common a situation that happens where people feel let down by their backline and, and understandably right the, the, this is the 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 definitely the the consequence uh, you know what? I'm not it's it's not at all I, I don't think it's definitely the or the consequence of, of MBT because uh, I think that he held quite well when he needed to I think it was just the enemy team playing very well uh, and the, the Ragnarok managing to hit onto the backline once the you know if the keepers had been up a little bit earlier. I think it would have been a different outcome. I, I think the, the outcome would have been different. MBT has scaled well and truly at this point. He's sitting at 74k energy, 754 uh, metal. Compare that over to Dujavi, and he's sitting at 39k and, and 47 metal? 47 metal? Oh, because he's got the Ragnarok? Yeah, it's his Ragnarok, right? Yeah, okay, it's his Ragnarok. Uh, so he, he's just making Ragnaroks, essentially. Uh, but the, the point is that he, he's scaled very, very well. So... At this point, the game is over, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to sit around here and wait till the last commander falls because, to be honest, we don't need to know what happens from here on in. Uh, you, you can, you can. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. MBT, the defense of the gods, is coming through right now. How many, how many units are in here? I wish. Can we see for a split second? We could see. 
I, I got no idea how to, how to count it. I mean, I, I can double click. Oh, there we go. I got the double click off. 127 and 154. So he's sitting at about 300 aircraft. This is exactly where you want to be when you're scaling in the late game. Ragnarok comes up and he immediately looks to return fire down towards that midline. Hits over the first plasma or over the first keeper into the second. Oh, oh, oh my God. Look at the amount of... You're not getting through that. That is too many keepers. That is enough keepers to keep those bad boys safe. And now on the front line, the Titans begin pushing through as well. Ragnarok is online, the second one for MBT this game. But you can't help but think it may just be too little too late. It was well played by the enemy team. Let's take a little bit of a, a look at how they're doing. We see the Juggernauts are on the way as well. The first one's already out, second one's coming through. Look at this. This is why you need to put keepers on the back line. MBT firing off into the middle. He's deflecting off three shields. One, two, three, and then off to the back, or technically off, the, off to the fourth. And that's why you gotta be so damn careful with these Ragnaroks. You just wanna, you wanna put keepers everywhere. I mean, oh, oh wow. Oh wow. Um, sir, can I interest you in, uh, in a fusion power plant? <laughs> Look how many windmills this madman's got. 320? Damn! That's a man who likes wind. All right, well, MB MBT holding on. I mean, well, you know what? We've come this far. We may as well go the distance. I was going to say, th there's no way he holds on much longer than this, though. Uh, he says, uh, as, as the Thors look to try and defend here against <laughs> against the Titan. Can the Titan be EMP'd? I just realized. I th the Titan can probably be EMP'd, can't it? I'm pretty sure it can. So MBT's just chilling at this point. I mean, he could throw down a second rack and rock if he wanted, but I mean, it, he, he knows it's over. Uh, he, he's just waiting until the end. We can see him still fighting though. He's still fighting to the death. A whole bunch of air now going to be coming through. And Yellow looking to come through on that side. Just a whole bunch of grunts coming down. And now MBT spamming out, looking to spend all those resources, sitting, sitting on around the region of 900 metal per second coming through from all of those energy converters. You can see they're having struggle, or tr they're struggling staying awake just because of that Ragnarok. Could you even go two Ragnaroks? I mean, it'd just be so much energy. Oh, oh, we got a couple units through. We got a couple units through. It's a grunt. It's a fast little grunt. He gets, he gets, he gets, he gets reclaimed. Oh, what do we hear? Any nukes are going off. MBT holding on for dear life. Still managing to keep it alive for the moment. The keeper's on the front line holding it up and all. Oh, no, never mind. Still getting out. Oh, something hit! Something hit! It looks like a keeper came down and someone got hit. And that's going to be all she wrote for MBT as the final bases get taken out. He defended with honor. He tried his best to carry, but unfortunately, the enemy team played it very well. They did a wonderful job here. So I, I think overall we've learned a couple of things this game. Number one, we, we want to take our advanced metal extractors as early as possible. Number two, we want to scale our aircraft effectively. And number three is we want to be reactive, right? MBT was very reactive throughout this game. If he saw air, if even so much heard of air coming in, it was straight away throwing down anti-air immediately. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you transporting, mate? What's it doing? I don't even know how those things work. Single commander hides. It's actually the commander of an ally once gone. What's the halo? Does that does the halo mean that it's been rezzed? Was this a commander that was killed and he rezzed it? Anyway, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. The commander gets control deed and the game is over. Let's take a look at the statistics. MBT finished with 86.3 million energy produced. 1 million metal. Almost double the energy of his nearest enemy. And almost, almost double the metal of his nearest enemy. Unfortunately, it didn't go his way today, but it was a solid attempt at carrying, and it demonstrates why he's one of the best in the world when it comes to those types of carries. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've got any feedback, please leave it down below. Other than that, we'll catch you in the next one.